This morning, failing the pub test, New South Wales top health official combative and dodging questions while passing the buck when it comes to announcing tragic news. Canberra lockdown sparking concerns for MPs and staffers who are in Canberra while Parliament is sitting. Reports the Morrison government is scrambling to organise flights to evacuate MPs from the capital. And speaking of frequent flying officials, we've taken a look at Air Force VIP flights and we'll share the details. It's Friday the 13th of August 2021. Good morning, welcome to Press Gallery. Also this morning, the PM has pointed the finger at China after a landmark report on climate change was released by the UN and we explain why we were suspended from YouTube for just seven hours. But first, it seems as if it all went down on Saturday for New South Wales Health Minister Brad Hazard. It started at 9.02am when the Minister's media team issued an unusual media alert for the already long-standing press conference to be held at 11am in Sydney. At that press conference, a record-breaking number of cases was announced by the Deputy Chief Health Officer. I think um, I've covered... Oh, I might to leave it to Dr McAnally. Thank you, Minister, and good morning. Uh, there were 319 locally acquired COVID cases reported in New South Wales until 8 o'clock last night. Gladys Berejiklian was taking the day off on the same day a record number of deaths was notified. Sadly, there have been uh, five deaths uh, since uh, yesterday. On Tuesday, the Health Minister and New South Wales Chief Health Officer fronted the inquiry into the government's management of the COVID-19 pandemic. Those actions to to government on the dates um, described. Thank you. I, I mean, I think you can understand where I'm going with this. Well, it's not that easy, Ms Sharp. I mean, I know you haven't been the health minister. Minister, Minister, um, I, I would ask that you, um, it is a WebEx hearing, it's very difficult. We have very limited time. And I, I would ask, no, sorry, the question, David, was, question, was put, me... question was put to Dr Chant, and I wish, and I think it was, it's right that we get an answer from Dr Chant. Well, Dr Chant gave her answer, and can I remind, excuse me, Dr Chant, it reminds you that uh, we have volunteered to come here. This We don't acknowledge that you have the capacity to have us here. You might and the question was put to Dr Chant, and if you would allow Dr Chant I to will answer. answer the, no, actually, I will answer the question that I'm now talking about, thank you. I mean, not, you're, not up to you to determine who's going to answer the questions. I'm the minister, and I'll answer it. There were political jabs. David, David, we are in the middle of a pandemic. We agreed to come for one hour, and you're just asking questions which are just aimed at just having a go. Can you actually bring this? You're the chairperson, well, and you should stick with what you agreed so Dr Chant can get on with her work and stop carrying on like you're running for the Senate, for heaven's sakes. So we know you're running for the Senate. Start, can we actually start. get on with what the arrangement was? The arrangement no, was we came voluntarily. Since then, Brad Hazard has received negative criticism following his display. Scott Morrison has slammed protesters on Tuesday who vandalised Parliament House, declaring action will be taken against them. The activists were calling on the government to act in response to a newly released report which has called for immediate action on climate change. Eight people were arrested after drawing graffiti and gluing their hands to the forecourt. The intergovernmental report on climate change has called for a code red for humanity. Hundreds of scientists contributing to the report have said evidence is undisputed that climate change is caused by humans. Temperatures are reportedly set to rise by one and a half degrees within the next two decades. Natural disasters are also predicted to become more common unless action is taken to reduce carbon emissions. The US and the UK have set targets for their emission reductions. Australia is set to make any concrete commitment. The Prime Minister though noting. It is also a clear fact that China's emissions account for more than the OECD combined. Canberra was plunged into lockdown overnight after one case was announced a further three were discovered. The news sent politicians and staffers to flee, scrambling to book flights home. Over the weekend, Barnaby Joyce flew home to his electorate. While there, the Albury LGA was declared a hotspot. 
He was then denied entry to the ACT. He needed to cancel a speech he had arranged to deliver at the National Press Club on Wednesday. The latest news poll released by The Australian has the coalition trailing the ALP at 47%, the Labor Party holding at 53% on a two-party preferred basis. Scott Morrison remains preferred Prime Minister against Anthony Albanese, though is polling two points lower, with Mr Albanese gaining three points. And at 6 News, we want to hear what you have to say. You can join the conversation on Twitter using hashtag 6NewsAU. Next week, we will share your thoughts on Australian politics. If you have anything that you would like us to dive into, or if you have any questions, head to our website, 6NewsAU.com, and contact us. Well, we're glad you're tuning in this morning, but you may not have even been able to see this program based on something that wasn't true. If you haven't already heard, 6 News was suspended by YouTube for a week on Wednesday afternoon, but that decision was overturned just seven hours later when they were approached by media, forcing them to admit that our video did not violate their community guidelines. Chief anchor Leonardo Puglisi explains what happened. So YouTube has unsuspended 6 News Australia just seven hours after suspending us for something we didn't do. Now this all started when we posted a video of MP George Christensen speaking in Parliament saying masks and lockdowns do not work. In that video we also attached the reply from opposition leader Anthony Albanese and in the description we included the information that majority of health experts do agree that masks make a significant difference when stopping the spread of COVID-19. Now, for the sake of not accidentally upsetting YouTube's AI again, we won't be posting that video here, but you can freely find it with a quick Google search. Now, only a few hours after posting that, we did get an email from YouTube saying we had been suspended for one week because of this so-called COVID-19 misinformation, but later, after being given questions by TV black boxes Rob McKnight, as well as Six News, in a statement, a YouTube spokesperson said, with the massive volume of videos on our site, sometimes the action is not accurate and we act to reinstate accordingly. In this case, there was sufficient context and so we've reinstated the video and removed the strike. Now, I talked about earlier how we don't want to annoy YouTube's AI again, so we have manually removed that video, but again, you can find it with a quick Google search. It is the second time we have been given a strike this year. One time was because of so-called graphic content that wasn't graphic. YouTube admitted they were wrong in both cases. And of course, if we do get suspended one time, if we, worst case scenario, get suspended permanently, you can now follow us on Rumble, an alternative where we won't get censored, rumble.com forward slash user forward slash 6 newsau Head of state transport in Australia goes largely unnoticed. There are no disruptive motorcades and no iconic aircraft on the world stage. Though that hasn't stopped a select few politicians from keeping the fleet in the air with their frequent flying. But are the costs justified? I prepared this story a little earlier. Air Force One, as it's commonly known, is probably the most notable head of state transport in the world. The 747 is due to be replaced in 2025 after former US President Donald Trump signed off on the final designs before he left office. The Australian Air Force operates a fleet of VIP aircraft to transport the Governor-General, the Prime Minister, their families and parliamentarians. One of the oldest in the fleet, the BBJ, costs over $8,000 for a trip between Sydney and the base in Canberra. The price jumps dramatically for a transcon hop from the nation's capital to Perth, costing just under $70,000. While its capacity is 30, at times it's flying empty or with two people on board. For international trips, Scott Morrison and the government fly on the VIP KC-30A, a multi-purpose transporter with VIP appointments. The price tag from Canberra to Washington came in at over $180,000. The newest addition to the fleet is the Falcon 7X, a hop from Canberra to Melbourne coming in just over $10,000 and over $65,000 to Perth. It does carry up to 14 people in comfort with life flat seating. In the first six months of last year, there was extensive use of the entire VIP fleet, often flying empty legs for positioning. Travellers included Josh Frydenberg, Michaelia Cash, Michael McCormack and Maurice Payne. Nobody can begrudge our politicians for wanting to be with their families at weekends or to carry out business when not in Canberra. 
Though it does beg the question, why not just fly commercial, especially between capital cities? And that is Press Gallery for this week. Thank you so much for your company. Leo will have six news this Sunday from 8pm, so join him for that. Don't forget to tune in to our special presentation on QAnon this coming Tuesday, both of which can be viewed right here on YouTube. I'm Christian Penny. I hope you have a great day.